built uh, the first unit I built was called the Carl Celli unit, which is a big. Uh, it's about a eight inch diameter cylinder, stainless steel cylinder, about eighteen inches long, and uh, there was posted on the internet some uh, hand sketched diagrams by Carl Celli of his system, mm -hmm. and built that. Could never get it to work and. And for at, over a year, nobody had been able to get a Carl Chell system to work. And then a guy from Scott. Over time and this the first <laughs> you just came in late. Uh, anyway, the, so uh, I learned from a guy in the United Kingdom that a, a, a man by the name of George from, from Scotland had taken the Carl Chell system and gotten it to work. And so that was. The first word that I had heard, had heard of somebody having success. I did research and learned about Stan Meyer's system. Uh, uh, a lot of people have been working in water car technology know about Stan Meyer. He uh, he uh, was from the suburb of Cincinnati, Ohio, and and uh, he had a, a, a VW buggy that he drove across the country. And uh, I happen to know happen to know about some Defense Department documents that talk about Stan Myers. So the Defense Department was well versed on this technology and although there were those people who tried to discredit him and say that he was phony and, and uh, had, uh, had built people out of business deals and so on, it turns out from the Pentagon documents that in fact his technology was legitimate. Also, uh, a guy by the name of Andre Poharic had a, had a motor home that he drove over 15,000 miles on water car technology. And all of the successful water car systems were using uh, what have recently come to be called resonant drive. And that is using electronics to create a resonance in the, that causes the water molecule to dissociate with very little energy. And as a consequence, you can get more energy out of the burning of the hydrogen and oxygen than was required to break the water molecule apart. And that's, that's really the basis for having a successful water car system using, uh, using those systems. Uh, there have been a handful of other guys, uh, uh, Francisco Pacheco from Bolivia, who was sponsored here by the Bolivian government back in 1944. A number of other guys who have had successful water cars, but they've all been suppressed by the uh, by the oil guys. Uh, this technology has never reached mainstream. In fact, in all of the all of the media's that could potentially reach mainstream, like Popular Mechanics and Popular Science and Scientific American and so on, have never run articles on this water car technology. So the public has not been well informed about what's been going on behind the scenes. And there have been carburation technologies back as far as uh, we know in the early 30s of the Pope carburetor, which got as much as 233 miles to the gallon, which was based upon a catalytic reaction between the metals of the carburetor and the gasoline. So when the gasoline company, the petroleum companies discovered this, they bought a bunch of these carburetors and reformulated gasoline so that they no longer would have a catalytic reaction. And then Pogue was accused of selling bogus, a bogus product. But anyway, all of this, learning about all this, these technologies stimulated my interest so that I've been working in hydrogen technology for the past seven years and built several generations of, of hydrogen um, electrolyzers. And one of them's on display back there, a the, uh, black box that was, uh, I had designed uh, a few years ago and came to Florida and the guy sitting in the front row here was the great builder of the, of the box. And uh, originally it was designed, it's a 60 cell unit, it was designed to run a, a, a Mazda RX-7, a rotary engine. And I've always had a love for that particular engine because it has very few moving parts. It's simple to work on. And uh, it turns out to be one of the uh, much better candidate than a reciprocating engine because the intake and the, and the exhaust ports are many degrees apart and it makes it so that uh, 
at the intake port, the cylinder is much cooler than at the exhaust port, so that you don't get the backflash that you get from a, a regular reciprocating engine. And Mazda has made two generations, the, uh, the RX-7 engine, the uh, 13B engine, they've, they've converted to run on hydrogen. Is that a Wankel now? Pardon? Is that a Wankel engine in there? A Wankel engine, yeah. Uh -huh. And then this most recent generation, the RX-8, they've also made a hydrogen prototype of that. And all of their, all of their findings suggest that, that it's a, an ideal candidate for running on hydrogen. And when I say hydrogen, for me, that means hydrogen and oxygen. Because some of the people, the, one of the main differences between running all of these prototypes that run on hydrogen, like BMW has had and Toyota and so on, is they use canisters of uh, high pressure canisters and it's burning diatomic hydrogen. And when those two hydrogen atoms are bonded together, it takes some of the energy in combustion just to break those molecules apart before they can combust. And the beauty of a resonance system, and particularly the one that Bob Boyce has developed, is that uh, it immediately creates monatomic hydrogen so that the atoms remain individual atoms for a period of time.